Welcome back to learning how to use InDesign for the Old Skona School Magazine. So I'm your and I. And so this is all just done with the tab key. I'll, he, this, I. Make sure you preserve it as close to what the author gave it to you because, you know, they were the one who created the text. It's the, and formatting actually makes a fair bit of difference as to how this piece is created. Um, he, this, I. So there on I. Okay, so from this first section of text, this is all that um, this is all the indentation that the original author had put in. So, but we still have this problem of this picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we leave some space around this picture. So we'll go back to our uh, this tool, and I think we want it actually a bit more up on the page um, because you'll notice uh, in reading the text that it says picture shown below, and it's referenced. So, but since we don't have, we don't want to um, take up a bunch of excess space uh, by putting the picture below, we're just going to say shown right. And so, um, this is an edit that you sometimes have to make in order for the logistics of layout to work out. Again, obviously, remember to save your work off often. Uh, save as, we'll save it to my desktop, I guess. And so we'll call it, this is more demo. Uh, form an InDesign CS4 document, that's what we want. Uh, that's because, so that we can open it up with InDesign later, because sometimes these things can take a while. So, we want to create some spaces around this. Um, I'm actually going to, I want that first paragraph to all be there. Uh, and then we'll put the, we'll start indenting. So, here, we see that the dawn did not come peacefully in the morning, and then this whole sentence is gone. So, um, it really isn't, uh, it's cut off. So we're going to press enter and that, or return, and that moves it to the next line. And we're just going to keep doing that in order to, to build up, um, sort of a border along it. Note that it won't be perfectly, uh, perfectly aligned, but as long as you have enough space so it's that the graphic doesn't interfere with the text, you're good. I, and and we since we have some room, don't be afraid to just you know click enter a few times, and make sure there's a nice uh, set of spaces around this uh, this graphic. Yeah, and again, if you do enter, make sure that you have uh, that you don't have excess spaces at the beginning of lines. Um, that's a side effect of pressing enter if you don't press it exactly in the right space. Okay, so now you'll notice that we've got a fair, uh, a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid placement of our graphic. We can just rearrange it. Um, yeah, so that's really good. Um, uh, yeah, it's got some space. Notice that it's still all within the pink border, so it will all get printed. Um, so yeah, that's great. Uh, all the indentation is done. However, we do have to realize that uh, at the end, we don't. Uh, we're missing a, like a line. We're missing a place, and that's really important because that's a that's a very critical point the author wants to emphasize. So having it at the end of the page is kind of nice. Uh, so we're just going to make this text box a little bit bigger, still within the pink border though. And then you'll notice that, it, um, oh, and we'll just do it down here as well. Okay, so there, that works really nicely. Um, alternatively, we could have see, tried to, um, 
we could have tried to, um, could have tried to delete some of this excess spacing, like where you've got, um, where you've got a one word, a one word line, like here. You could try and see if you could, you know, work out the spacing so that it's not as big a problem. But that's not a, but we were able to do it just by resizing the text box. Um, also, just keep an eye out for any formatting errors that have happened. So like here we have an ec uh, extra long space between face and belongs, which isn't intentional. So we can just delete that. Um, everything else is looking good. Remember to always double check your work uh, and just make sure uh, make sure everything looks good. So that's like about halfway between the spaces. So you want about an equal border of white space. So this is really good for our uh, for our first page. So. This looks more than acceptable. So now we're, we're going to look, go on to our second page. And so again, just like before, we're going to use a text box, drag, and we'll give one about that big because we're, you know, we're not, we don't have, we're probably not going to have a full, uh, a full page worth of text. So place was where the last line then. So we're going to copy all this and note that there is a line break over here. There is a line break. And so we want to preserve that because again, that's part of the author's original intent. And we, so we'll paste. Okay, here we go. Uh, again, notice that there is, um, uh, Adobe puts everything into Times New Roman by default. That's because, especially for something like this, uh, that's writing, uh, if you ask a teacher, they'll always want it in Times New Roman 12. So while it's not, uh, it, it's the best font that doesn't detract from the text. So we're going to keep it like that. Notice that we still have that line break in there, and again, just preserve the uh, preserve the indentation. So on I have several I two, and note that the author has um has this thing going on with the dash that's um to show interruption of diff uh, sort of a contrasting thought that's done by the author that's obviously in there purposefully however when we hand it off we can always make changes to that if they uh, determine that that's not what they want so this is good we've got everything uh, everything put put in um, we can actually now resize this text box because we're not going to use it for all that much more and now we want the graphic, and so if you'll remember that it's this angusdrawing.jpg is the file we want to use. That's it for part two, and we'll see you in part three.